A spokesperson says Senegal's main opposition presidential candidate, Basiru Dio Maifai, will win Sunday's vote in the first round as campaigning concludes today, Friday. El Haj Malik Ndiaye says the margin will be as high as 60 percent. Diomai Fai represents main opposition leader Usman Sonko's Pastef party. Both men were released from incarceration about a week ago. There are 17 other presidential candidates, including the ruling party. Diomai Fai's spokesperson, Malik Ndiaye, tells me that Senegalese voters are yearning for change and that they believe Pastel is the party that will deliver the goods. As you may know, uh, the Senegalese people are aspiring to change the system we used to have since our independence. And uh, for sure, it's our political party or our project who is presenting the total change that we need in order to be in a new path for our country, economically, politically, socially, and all of this. What we are proposing is really what the Senegalese people and globally African people are, are aspiring to. We have a young candidate, well motivated, very professional. He is uh, supported by the one famous political leader, President Usman Sonko. So if we combine the two, for sure, we, we will be, of course, uh, the favorite for this uh, election. And currently, what we see is one round election. Your candidate, Mr. Farr, has said that uh, one of his priorities, if he's elected president, will be to restore the rule of law. What do you think he means? Because as you've noticed that uh, in the very three past years, the law in Senegal has been really used for political objectives. And uh, it should not be like that. So that's why for us it's vital to make sure that justice will be really well reviewed and make sure that uh, all people will be equal uh, in terms of justice and also make sure that the professional of the justice, the magistrate and all of them will be protected to do their job correctly without uh, satisfying uh, political objectives. And also we have been a victim of injustice. Our candidate, our leader, more than 1.5 thousand Senegalese people in jail. And uh, all this come from justice. So meaning we need, of course, to take it as a priority to review the institution in this country, to make them stronger, as said by Obama in the past. Africa don't need strong leaders, but strong institutions. And that's the case for us. Mr. Fai and uh, Mr. Sonko were released uh, recently from incarceration. Uh, do you think you had enough time to campaign? Really, we didn't even need to have them in the campaign. Because Senegalese people have already made their choice and everything is for them. They know why they were put in jail. Just because they were doing everything to fight against our project. But strategically... President Usman Sonko, who is a very big and generous leader, has thinking all about this and prepared several scenarios. That's why we have a good candidate, the best one. Now, having President Usman Sonko and Basiru Jamaifai released a week before is just fantastic. And you can see it in the pictures everywhere they go. You see that uh, the Senegalese people are really willing to elect the candidate of our project. And the project is a Senegal in a, where we have justice and a Senegal which is well developing. Once again, is your party ready for Sunday's vote? And uh, do you think it will be free and fair? Yes, we are ready and everything has been done in our side. So just waiting for Sunday and uh, for sure we are confident that it will be one round in our Candidate Basir Jamaifai will be elected, not less than 60 percent for us. Our main obligation is just to make sure that the vote is secured. El Hash Malik Ndai is the spokesperson for Senegal opposition presidential candidate Basiru Dio Maifai, representing Usman Sonko's Pastel Party. Kenya thinks the East African Community Regional Force that served in the Democratic Republic of Congo until December last year was a successful mission. 
At a public lecture in Nairobi, Kenya's Prime Cabinet Secretary and Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs, Musalia Mudevadi, defended the mission on failing to take down armed groups, urging the mandate restricted the troops from taking sides. But Mr. Mudavadi also ran into the usual confusion on the definition of peacemaking, peacekeeping and enforcement, insisting the ESCRF were peacekeepers. The mandate that was given to the ESCRF and then was to have in one year of peacekeeping and we finished our tour of duty as the East African community. If you follow carefully for the period that they were there, the tensions subsided, so we did our job. As an East African Community Peacekeeping Intervention Team, Mr. Mudavadi told a gathering of students and lecturers at the United States International University Africa in Nairobi. However, the UN says peacemaking generally includes measures to address conflicts in progress and usually involves diplomatic action to bring hostile parties to a negotiated agreement, usually conducted by special envoys, governments, groups of states, regional organizations or the United Nations. Peacekeeping often involves the implementation of a ceasefire or peace agreement by preventing a clash of warring functions. For example, it is not to be confused with peace enforcement, which often involves the application of a range of coercive measures, including the use of military force, often on the authorization of the UN Security Council. Peacekeepers are often allowed to use force to defend themselves, property, or civilians, especially when the host state is unable to provide adequate security. East African Community Regional Force, according to its publicized mandate, was to jointly plan and conduct operations with the Congolese army to defeat the armed group's elements in the Eastern DRC, keep the law and order and support in the disarmament, realization, community recovery and stabilization program. At the height of their operations, East African Community Regional Force routinely came under criticism for not filing on M23 from whom Kinshasa claimed had refused to withdraw from certain territories. However, East African Community Regional Forces also reported minimal clashes between the FADAC and M23 or other armed groups, registering the longest relative ceasefire. Yet between the two sides, the clashes have since escalated. However, for the SADAC force, the troops will, among other things, be mandated to support the DRC in neutralizing negative forces and armed groups in Eastern DRC to restore and maintain peace and security and thereby create a secure environment. <laughs>